Perfect. Alright, this week we're going to work on a little bit of something different. Uh, not exactly what we've been working on, which has been that right there and things like that truck over there. This week is a little bit different. We want to kind of show you some of some of the stuff that we end up having to do. It's not always just working on cool cars and working on this. Sometimes we got to maintain some of the stuff that we have. And one of those things that we have to maintain is this truck right here. This is a 1993 Ford F-350. This is a straight drive truck, long wheelbase, and you can see that it has seen some better days. It has been uh, out in the weather, not honestly, not that much, but it was run in like 2008, 2009, and around here, that was when they first started kind of putting some calcium chloride and some crazy stuff on the roads to help with the wintertime conditions. And this truck was driven during those years, during the wintertime, and it really did a number on it. Um, why is this truck important? This truck is important because of a couple things. First off, it was my grandpa's truck. While it doesn't have the sentimental value of like the Fairlane or like the Galaxy, you know, it was left to us by him. But the main reason, the main driver by working on this thing is that it's a farm truck. We have, the family owns a farm, and we it's been in the family for generations for a lot of years. So dad was next in line to kind of work on this thing, or, or to kind of be able to take care of this place. We use this thing on the farm all the time. We go up, we take it up the mountain, we take stuff up there, we'll load brush into it and take it up there and dump it. There's a lot of different stuff that we use this thing for because it's kind of rough. Because it's got four-wheel drive, because it's got the big knobby tires on it, things like that, it makes it perfect for this. So, the reason that we're working on it, or what we're going to be doing to it this week, is actually we're putting a new bed on it. So, the bed on it, of course, is pretty bad, but let's go take a look at it, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So, if we got in the bed of this thing, and if you look at it, and you're like, oh, it's not so bad. It's not really, really not too bad, and up here, and all the way around on the bedsides and things like that, but then... We get to that right there. And uh, a truck that has a hole in the bed is pretty much useless. Um, so, like I said, it's like that over here. And if we flip this up over here as well, there's another one over there. So, this bed was pretty much completely killed. Again, um, we have worked on this thing a little bit in the past. We put some... Why don't we do this thing? The rear spring hangers had rotted off of this thing, and so we put them, we put some new rear spring hangers on this thing. Because once we got under it, it's not just like terrible. The sheet metal's in really terrible, it's really bad shape. But the underneath of it's not so bad. The spring mounts uh, were rotted off and actually up into the bed. And so uh, we put those on last year, and we put some new shocks and things like that. And honestly, it's really done good. And you probably are thinking, that thing is a rust box, why even worry about it? Well, if you've looked at the prices of new trucks and things like that, even the price of like a square body truck nowadays is kind of crazy. I mean, you're looking probably at least six, seven thousand dollars at the bare minimum, and that's probably if it's as bad a condition as that thing. Um, miles. Right, the drivetrain on this thing has less than a hundred thousand miles on it, maybe about ninety thousand. So the drivetrain of this thing, drivetrain of this truck, is in really good condition um, as far as function-wise. So we're just trying to save some sheet metal so that we can continue to use it. Um, so this must be a pretty common thing because this guy had three hundred and fifty beds, three hundred and fifty mixed four truck Chevrolet, Ford Dodge Chevrolet. And the, he had three long bed forwards that would fit this truck, and this one's rotted, so which must be a common thing. So. Yeah, so like Dad said, so what we did is we we're going to just take the bed off of that truck and put it on a new one. But this was honestly the best bed that he could find for it, and you can see that it is pretty darn rotted in all these different spots. Uh, back here on the back, that one, the tailgate's about to come off of it, the the uh, the holders on the tailgate and stuff. I mean, it's it's in pretty bad condition. But we can reuse the tailgate, I think. Um, tailgate's fine, just the hinge pins. It's just the hinge off. pins and things like, like this are here on these. And right here, these have all rotted off of that truck. So these are in good shape on this thing. The tailgate itself is in fine shape. So what we're going to do is pull the bed off. 
But since we have this bed here now, the plan is you can see these seams that run across here and you can actually see a cut that dad's already started and the seams on the back. So the plan is, again, to talk to kind of show something else that we do that's not just <laughs> not just working on pretty nice cars is sometimes you got to fix things like this. So we're going to take, Dad's got this big cutter, we're going to take and cut this out. We're going to cut it right along that seam and right along that seam and then back here on the back. And the plan is to just kind of fold this up. We're still not 100% sure exactly how these are attached to the cross seals, if they're attached to the cross seals. So you can see the cross seal there. You can see where this is rotted through. But it's hard to tell exactly where this is or how this is attached to the cross seals. So the plan is we're going to cut it at the back here, cut it down the sides, and then we're going to just start peeling it up. And hopefully if it's not attached, we can just peel this thing up. It'll just fold all the way up and then maybe we make one final cut up at the front. And then... We're gonna call the guys up at B and H Sheet Metal up in Asheville. They we they do a lot of we get a lot of our sheet metal from those guys, and just get them to cut us a piece that's a little wider than the cut that we made, and we're just gonna put a flat piece of metal in here. Hopefully tread plate. Hope oh, tread yeah. So if we put like some sort of tread plate in here, we can weld. Dad can grind that paint off, weld it. Just put one flat tread plate in here, weld it up, and then we can. Uh, we can spray we'll your old buddy Slim Jim yep. McDowell to put That's a right. bed liner That's right. I forgot in. about that. We'll take the bed and we'll put it on the truck, take the bed over to Slim Jim. He's going to throw uh, some bed liner in it, and that'll have this bed pretty much taken care of and get this truck back functional for wintertime because that's especially when we drive it because most of our other stuff's not too terribly rusty. So we try and put this thing in the salt as much as we can to keep our, the rest of our stuff from kind of getting uh, rusted down. So dad's going to start cutting on this thing. I'm going to show you what he does. This thing wasn't 100% built exactly like we thought it was. Um, there's the piece of structure back here on the very back. Then there's a cross seal that runs basically the whole length. Then there's two cross seals, one here and one about right here, that were only running between the tubs, of course. And then there's another one here that runs over to there, much like the one back here in the back. And then there's another structure up here. So. What we did at this point was just because instead of having to try and find those spot wheels which were really hard to find and see we just cut the cross members out we'll build up some sort of structure there uh, for the for the next piece we put in but now i'm going to go ahead and cut these other cross members out and we'll have this whole front piece out we'll have the whole middle section of the bed cut out and kind of ready to plan to go back in the other direction this is fun uh, this is fun. Yes. Is fun. <laughs> I enjoy it. All right, that's that. The whole everything's out. We decided up here in the front that we're gonna leave that little section there uh, because there is the the structure, the bed structure up there on the front. So we didn't want to cut that out. So we left that in. So we've got this whole section out. Uh, I've got to do some traveling tomorrow. So Dad's going to weld us in these uh, the old cross seals raise them up a little so they'll touch to the bed uh, and have all that ready then we're going to see if we can just get one big piece cut here and it'll just fill this whole gap so again not the most glamorous job in the world but something has to be done since we got the um 
bed cut out of the new new bed that's going on the blue truck. Got that cut out. Went up to B&H Sheet Metal today, and they cut us a piece of sheet metal here that's going to end up going into the floorboard. And the way this is going to set, it's actually going to be the entire length of the bed, starting here at the headboard, go all the way to the very back edge back there, and it's going to set right here between the wheel uh, the wheel wells. So. I think what we and Dad have talked about and kind of the plan is we are going to take the cross seals, which he actually got out. I haven't showed that. I'll show that here in a second. Take those cross seals. So we're going to take the, tr tr bed, the bed off of the blue truck, take the cross seals that were in this thing, put them on the blue truck. We're going to take the new bed, set it up on it, get everything lined up how it's supposed to be, weld the cross seals in, then lay the lay the sheet metal over top of the cross seals in the white bed stand it up and then that'll give us a good place a good pattern to drill the holes so that we can run the bolts through the new sheet metal down through the frame so everything's going to be bolted down how it was uh, originally so that's the tentative plan so we're going to get this thing unloaded get some stuff moving around here so we can actually work on what we need to So we decided that it made most sense to just go ahead and torch the heads off of these four because why well, get under there and get dirty but then this one right here is only about three inches away from the fuel tank under there so dad decided I should probably get under there and take that one off which those are actually in really good shape they're not rusty at all he said so he's gonna get under here and unbolt it and we have the three, there's three little bolts in here, uh, little seven millimeter heads on them. That'll detach the neck from the bed. And then there was three plugs back here, right there. That was uh, the trailer harness and the tail lights. Got those disconnected. So once he gets those two nuts off, we should be ready to pull this thing off and get it out of here. We got the bed off this thing, you guys saw us drop it off, and, well, I'll just show you. This is kind of what we're dealing with underneath this thing. You can see the bumper. Very good condition. Definitely going to be able to reuse this. Probably not. No, we're going to cut this off with a torch and drop the bumper out of here, get it out of the way. Um, the rest of this... It's so strange, and it has to be because of the way the tires slung that stuff off the road when it was driven out in the salt. Right here, forward, this frame is great. Right here, back, it is just so rusty. And I think that really, I mean, it's very solid. There's no holes through it. I mean, it's, you know, there's, it's not like ready to break in half or anything. It's just covered in rust. I mean, you can see everything chunking off here and everything. So the plan is we're actually going to take this thing and allegedly we're going to drive it, kind of get a bunch of this rust blown off of it, and take it out of the car wash and blast it off. And Dad's got some rust preventative coating. It's called Carwell. Good stuff. And uh, we're going to just saturate this thing in it, two or three coats of it. And then we'll get in here. We're going to replace these fuel lines and all that good stuff. Um, this tank needs probably a new strap on it, so we'll probably put a new strap in it just to hold it in place. But again, this is a farm truck. It's literally, its sole purpose is to drive back and forth to Bear Creek, drive it on the farm, do different things like that, drive it in the salt, stuff like that. So me and Dad had a full conversation about this, like, was this even worth saving? And the conclusion we came to was, let's figure out whatever it takes to get that bed onto this truck put a bed liner in the truck and then drive it until this thing literally just falls apart again the drivetrain on this thing is excellent it's great there's no noise in the transmission motor nothing knocks the transmission's great transfer case is great 
everything in the drivetrain on this thing pristine perfect less than 100,000 miles on it and you guys know how the used market is nowadays so plan is get this cleaned up figure out what we need to do get the new bed get the floor in it dropped on here and that's what we're going to do we've talked ourselves up and down through this conversation multiple times already since before i turned on the camera so that's the plan uh, had a little bit of delay had to wait on sparks to get here and some things like that dad took and washed the frame out and tried and got some of the some of the crud that was under there out it looks a little better we found a couple little things but we're just going to kind of ignore those and keep moving on um well one thing that we did do was rock auto had this tank in stock this is an exact replacement 19 gallon tank everything should pretty much just fall in place this came with a new sending unit and fuel pump here uh, like I said, fresh tank. We got the um, the fuel fill hose also. Uh, the only thing is that the new plug here is different than the old one. But the cool thing is, is they actually give you the ends. So you can take and cut the old style plug off and splice this guy in. And then that plugs directly into that. So that's all good. Check the fuel lines. Fuel lines are all good also. They... Um, are a lot better shape than we thought they were. The fuel lines themselves are actually super solid. The only thing that was kind of rusty was the line that was going back to that charcoal canister that goes up to the front for like the uh, fuel, uh, whenever it, it vents up into that charcoal canister to keep the smell down from the gas fumes and things like that. We're just gonna ignore that because it hasn't been there in forever. Those lines have been basically rotted away forever. So the fuel lines themselves are actually in really good shape and we're gonna just use them and move on. So right here pulling this out, the only thing holding it in, there's two straps that go on the bottom. That Rock Auto kit did come with those, come with new straps. That's got the, we've got these really nice disconnect tools uh, that we've, we got a couple years ago now. Oh. <laughs> Sucks got fuel in it. Does have fuel in it. <laughs> Uh, these disconnect tools they work really well they've got this handle on them and they just slide right in we had some old ones that were just the basically the rings themselves didn't work hardly as good these work really well um, like I said two straps a couple bolts holding the straps in and then unplugging the uh, plug that was there and then this is what I'll end up cutting off and putting the new plug onto and then uh, yeah then we'll be ready to drop this thing we got this fuel tank set out of this thing and when we set it down over here uh, watch this closely when dad picks it up the end of it Yeah, so there was our two main gas leaks. There was a little bit of a stream there So you can tell that when this thing was in the salt and stuff that just because of the way the fuel tank was in here This is the worst part that stuff slung up in here and just set no matter how good They tried to wash it just couldn't get it out of this frame here and just made this a really rusty mess so one thing we noticed once we got the tank out of here, the frame right there, you can see, is not in the greatest of shape. Uh, it's really thin. Like I said, that has just sat there and rusted. So just to have some extra precaution to go in here, Dad's going to take a piece of angle and basically cap over the side of the frame and bolt it through the uh, this upright flange there. Just to give this thing just a little extra support since it's going to be kind of beat around on the farm so dad's got two holes drilled there two drill two holes drilled there we'll bolt this thing in we took this jack with some wood here and really cinched this up tight so it's laying really tight against the frame so we can put these drill these holes bolted in and then that'll at least add a little bit of structure here to you know just keep us going for a little while longer all right that is in place now four bolts we let it down it really acts like it's pretty supported so hopefully that will last there for a little while at least there's a little paint on that looks as good as new hardly ever know it was there <laughs> showroom quality the nice thing is this spectra premium tank it came with all the instructions it comes with what wire is in this plug and which one it needs to go to in that plug uh, and they send butt connectors and everything so i'm gonna go ahead and get this cut off get the new plug put on and have all that stuff ready to go so we can plug it just once we set the new tank in we can plug it in it should just go right to work hopefully if i do what i'm supposed to do right
right, I got the new plug wired in. I'm going to wait and make sure that the sending unit and the fuel pump and everything works once we get the new tank in before I shrink these down, just in case something got wired a little backwards. This is a little, there's a lot of like, you have to be real particular about it because they don't say like, purple on this one goes to this color. It's more of, they show the diagram, which is in black and white. Um, and then, so you have to use that, make sure you get the right wire. Then identify the um, old wires, which luckily I had cut off and I could see the colors off of this when I cut it off. Identify that, then come down here and see the color that A needs to go to and what color it needs to go to in the original harness. So that's a little bit uh, finicky, so I want to make sure I've got that right. So the old straps have some padding glued onto them and they're still, they're like really stuck, can't really get them off. We were trying to think what we were going to do with the new ones. We had some of the old Dynamat from the red truck and a big case of it I had back there. So went ahead and just cut me some strips of that. Give some thickness and some padding to it. Uh, and it peeled off and stuck on here so we don't have to worry about it trying to fight its way off when we put these straps in place. So that should work really well. I'm going to hang the straps in here and we are ready to pull in the new tank. Alright, we've got the new tank put in here. Looks really good and in general not too bad to put in. The hardest part was the new straps were really stiff and straight and to get them bent and up in place that was a little tough. We had to get a little longer bolt. But in general not too bad. Uh, well, one thing we did have to do, we had to bend this flange up here on the tank. That one already was like that over there. Um, but we had to bend that up so the strap would clear it so it would bolt up where it needed to be. Now. We're gonna up the fuel lines. We've already got the plug plugged in here. We're gonna put a little fuel in this thing, hook the battery back up, and just make sure that everything works like it's supposed to. And then that's gonna kind of wrap us up for this right now. I realized that through this, I never really showed you guys this, but I mean, this is part of the reason why we're working on this truck is under the hood here, everything is in really good shape. All the drivetrain and everything's really good. So yeah, we'll just keep working on it. Dad's got the battery hooked up. We should be ready to find out if this thing's gonna start. Fuel pump primed. It did. Yeah. Send it. Well, turn it off and turn it back on again. I yep. It's priming. Maybe do it a couple times, I guess. In here. Again. Yep. So that's good. What's the fuel? What's the fuel gauge say? Uh, oh, it won't go on until it. Well, it won't turn on until it's on, will it? Yeah, it's on. It's just above empty. Prime again? Yep. Alright, starting. Alright. Perfect. No leaks. Everything's good there. All that's good. What's the question the gauge? Yeah, I am kind of too. Just above empty. Put five, five gallons in a 19 should, gallon, it should be about, about a quarter, but it should be about a quarter of a tank. Like I'd, rather run, I'd rather show and run it out earlier than. Right. Huh. All right, everything is wrapped up here. This thing started, we took the old fuel tank, put it over there, but we had it set up here and siphoned the gas over into the new one. The fuel gauge does work, it just runs, goes to empty a lot earlier. Uh, which is a good thing, right? Give you a little extra time to get to the fuel station if you need to. So this thing so far is really good. I think I'm going to call this good for this week. I think um, this I was only expecting to do the, uh, like a one video on this, but I think it's going to end up being two just because we've done quite a bit getting the bed floor cut out and then getting the, uh, the fuel tank put in. I think there's going to be a bunch of time going into getting the, the bed floor put in the new one and then getting it lined up and everything onto the bed. So we're going to break this up into two episodes. So that was one, and then we'll do the next one next week. 
So I know this is a little different than what we normally do, but we wanted to go ahead and kind of show you guys what we get into sometimes on for especially working on our own stuff. Um, if you haven't clicked that subscribe button, it's really important and helps us out a ton. We have hit a thousand subscribers, which is just incredible. And thank you so much for everyone that's done it. It's really, like I said, it's a big deal. And uh, we're just continuing to grow. We want to just keep going. That's just the very first milestone. We want to vastly exceed that coming up here. Uh, so thanks everyone that's done that. And if you haven't, please do. It's very helpful. Uh, check us out on social media too. We put up stuff every single day. I'm putting up stuff and it's a little bit more real time. So you would have seen more about this blue truck a little earlier if you'd been following us along on that. Uh, so go ahead and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all those. Uh, and you can kind of see all of our shorts and stuff that we put up. Kind of, like I said, much more real time. Uh, just because of how my life is. I have to have a few videos in the bank uh, because of work and all that good stuff. So thank you guys so much for joining. We'll see you next week.